Neil Gilliman here, Artistic Director and Conductor of your Dayton Philharmonic, with not one, not two, but three possible openings for this Piano Bench Chat for a frigid January here in Dayton, Ohio. I'm all bundled up at home, uh, slightly theatrically, but only slightly, dealing with the cold, but having a wonderful time getting ready for a whole bunch of future performances that I'll be conducting, um, including the first thing you heard, uh, a bit of the end credit music for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, or Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, if you prefer the American version of the title, the first movie in the Harry Potter sequence. The Dayton Philharmonic will be performing that in February with the movie and everything. Lots and lots of notes, lots of work, but a really wonderful experience. Then uh, the second thing that you heard was uh, music from the very beginning of Swan Lake, which the Dayton Philharmonic will be performing with Dayton Ballet the week after Harry Potter, another big project to get ready. And then the last thing that you heard there was the opening of Puccini's opera Tosca, which I'll be conducting with Dayton Opera and the Dayton Philharmonic coming up in April. So this is all of the music that's swirling around in my head in the middle of this little mini ice age we're in, in mid-January. But the funny thing is, for this p piano bench chat, I didn't really want to talk so much about Harry Potter, as much as I love it, and there's lots to talk about, or Swan Lake, same thing, or Tosca. I wanted to go back to some of the music I played last month, that famous, because I keep coming back to it, Prelude by Johann Sebastian Bach. And it's not just that it's a beautiful and wonderful piece of music. It's a piece that just really sticks in my mind uh, because it's one of the first pieces I ever learned to play on the piano when I was sort of a, you know, more of a grown up in my teenage years. I'd already switched to uh, studying violin and not studying piano anymore, but I still sat down at the piano to play, and this was one of my favorites. But later on, it became, I think, even more important to me um, when I was in France studying with Nadia Boulanger because it was a piece she would keep coming back to. And the reason she would keep coming back to it is that in some way that prelude, the first prelude of Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier, encapsulates really all of Western classical music and not just classical music either. Even in just those first four bars. Those four chords turned into those beautiful arpeggiation. is just a fundamental statement in music that this is where we are, it happens to be C major. We have a consonant chord, a dissonant chord that goes away, points in a different direction, a different dissonant chord that then points home. And those four chords also give you seven notes of the C major scale, which is why that chord progression defines where you are. You've heard all of the notes that you would hear in that piece of music. Mademoiselle Boulanger used to say that those chords gave you all of Western music from Monteverdi to Ravel. Well, she was right, but now we can expand that. It's all of Western music from Monteverdi to Taylor Swift and Beyonce and even Dolly Parton. It's all there in those four chords. And what's more, in this prelude, so much of what's at the core of music is all here in very simple form, but with each chord repeated twice so you have more time to absorb it and think about what you're hearing and enjoy what you're hearing. And so I'm gonna take you 
through from the beginning to end and sort of look at what this prelude tells us about music and the way music relates to itself in terms of things that are consonant and things that are dissonant. And let me tell you, from the beginning of music, from the beginnings of monks chanting Gregorian chant back in the Middle Ages and even before, this has always been the big, I wouldn't say controversy, but it's been the big subject in music. What is consonant? or what is pretty, and what is dissonant, or what is ugly. And it changes over time, and ultimately becomes kind of the thing that makes the music we love work. That interplay between consonants being stable, and dissonance being a little bit unstable and moving from stability to instability and back, from consonance to dissonance and back, from, you might say, release or from calm to tension and then release back to calm. So here we go. We start with consonants. passage where I was saying all this stuff and the whole time the note G is in the bass it was here I'll emphasize the G ugly still G in the bass still G in the bass still G in the bass Incredibly dissonant clap. 
slashing chord. music theory a pedal not one of these pedals down at the bottom of the page but a pedal because it just kind of sits there and all this happens around it so it sits for an extended time on g the fifth note of the scale which then falls back down to C and leads us home. There's so many other little details and complexities in this piece. I could go on for an hour, but I'm gonna not do that for you because you need to stay warm and probably you know, jump up and down. Um, but that's what's been on my mind lately. All kinds of music in preparation for upcoming concerts, but I keep coming back to this one piece by Bach because really, as I said, it's what everything else springs from. I mean, not in the sense that Bach is the antecedent of all those other pieces of music, but he encapsulates the musical language that's used by John Williams in Harry Potter, by Tchaikovsky in Swan Lake, by Puccini in Tosca, and almost everyone else. I mean, literally, I mean, you name any musical performer working today, and chances are probably 95% of them are still working in their own way and in a contemporary way and with a new and more modern, perhaps, sense of what's consonant and what's dissonant, what's tense and what's resolution. But they're all working within that same framework that Bach so beautifully encapsulated at the beginning of his prelude. Have a wonderful and hopefully warm January. We'll see you next month and in the future for performances by the Dayton Philharmonic and Dayton Ballet and Dayton Opera. And uh, thank you for watching the Piano Bench Chats, and I'll see you next month with the Piano Bench Chat for February. Take care.